greatest of the greatest. A podcast that you never knew you needed. With interviews from people you have never met, or maybe you have once or twice. Asking questions and knowing more than you want to know about them. You are listening to Full Buddy Cast. Do you remember the baseball camp we went to together? Bastions? I don't remember, but we got some... Remember there was some kid from here. Yeah, Brian Bastions. Is that who it was? And we got his autograph and stuff. Oh yeah, Brian Bastions was so cool back in the day. And he was the guy who got signed by like the Rangers? Yep. Yeah. And then my brother... the next big thing. Were you there when my brother got his face... Smashed by a, he was standing too close to a. Uh, no, I don't remember that. A batting cage, and so the ball hit the net and went oh. right in my brother's face. Boom. Why does he get hit in the face so much? <laughs> He's just an accident prone guy. <laughs> just super. I remember this one time my mom called him that stuck, like Mole Man yeah. stuck. The absent minded professor. Because uh. <laughs> he would, he's. <laughs> Uh, anyway, everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, we've got another episode with Aaron Center, my cousin. My cousin Aaron. I don't know what we're going to call this thing, if we do call it anything, but we just we just randomly um, re- visit. He lives about an hour away, so we can't do this all the time. So we're just going to pump out a few episodes here and there. But this one, it's going to be more of a Christmas theme. We've been kind of catching up with his life, and then we kind of move into the next uh, kind of our theme. This is our Christmas episode, so jingle, jingle, jangle. It's Merry the best Christmas. time of the year. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. We talked about rugby. No, we talked about chef last time. Yeah, let's talk I think about, a little bit of both. Let's we talk kinda... about rugby this time. You're talking about D1 and this and that and on TV now. And Yeah. How did you get into... We talked about. How, I think we talked a little bit how I got, got into it. Rugby. Yeah, but I didn't really touch on how it went, all went down necessarily. Um, yeah, pick up to where you, wherever you. Yeah, remember. like I said, my roommate. You know, I went there thinking I was going to walk onto the soccer team. Um, realized quickly that that wasn't going to happen. That I didn't like the team enough to even entertain the idea. And he kept riding me about playing rugby, and then finally took me a couple parties, and I got along with the guys really well. I mean, anyone who knows any rugby dudes usually will tell you that they're some of the best dudes out there. They, you know, you can smash your heads against each other for 80 minutes and then go have a beer with each other and, you know, want to kill each other one minute and be best friends the next minute. Mm -hmm. And so that camaraderie was something I was really drawn to and I really enjoyed it and decided I'd give it a shot and ended up making the team and finding that I kind of had this little special niche talent that was, you know, utilized in a couple different positions where I could run and I could kick and I could chase and I had decent hands, and I knew how to tackle from my days wrestling and stuff like that, you know, because it's not like football where you blow each other up as hard as you can hit with your, you know, shield of armor. You got to hit somebody as hard as you're willing to be hit, you know, more or less. You can't, you know, you can't dish out a blow that you're not going to recover from because what's the point, you know, which, you know, sometimes you accidentally do that, but. So wrestling, you're running, and it's, or. uh, It's a lot more about, like, takedown and. Twisting bodies. Yeah, well, and that's the thing how the NFL has kind of become now, too, if you think about it, like. Um, Pete Carroll, when he first took over, one of the big things he did was bring in a rugby, a couple of rugby players to show how they tackle because it's not using your head and your neck. Gotcha. You know, you're not spearing people. You have to wrap up and bring mm-hmm. people down, you know. And so it's a lot like wrestling, you know, mm-hmm. when you learn how to take down people in wrestling. Um, it's very comparable to that. You do a lot of the same drills. So you caught the bug. I caught the bug hard, man. I loved it. I loved the guys and I loved the team. And we were a decent team when I first joined. Um, you know, rugby's not a huge sport in our country, but. Um, collegiate rugby was kind of picking up. Uh, we had just come off of probably our, one of our best seasons before this next generation of kids have come up. Um, it's become a varsity sport since I was there and they're doing really well now. But back then we were ranked like 15th in the nation. We had just come off of a sweet 16 performance in the playoffs. Um, I was drawn to that, like, Oh, this team's really good too. So if I work my butt off, I can say I play on like a division one ranked team. Well, that first year that I finally got kind of my feet underneath me and was playing full time and we did really bad. <laughs> I don't think we won a game. <laughs> we were preseason ranked like 12 or 13, I think. And <laughs> I think we went, Oh, and 10, um, just had a horrible season. Our captain kind of abandoned us oh, and it was no. just kind of a rough, rough go of things. There was kind of some coaching turmoil and, you know, we had this, were, it, were the games blowouts or were you? No, no, not just at all. Close? Just close. Just, we just, yeah, didn't have, I don't know. It was a rough year. And so we turned it around the next year and did a lot better and kind of got ourselves 
back to 500 and you know, I was kind of part of that rebuilding of that team. Were you um, captain ever? Were you no, ever? no, no, no. I was never that guy. I was, you know, like I said, I was still kind of learning on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, I almost feel like after college is when I got really good at rugby, when I really oh. started to play uh, sevens more often and stopped playing 15s, which, you know, there's the two different types of rugby. There's 15 on 15 and there's seven on seven. And the seven on seven game is more prone to speed and, and, uh, being able to open field tackle, which is something that I had to be really good at with the position I played um, fullback in 15s. So it's just kind of like fit my my mold pretty well. And so I was able to kind of excel at that. And our team did really well. We have a couple of good stories of going down to California and, you know, winning tournaments that, you know, nobody knew who we were. We are some kids from Ellens because <laughs> we were called the Ellensburg Bulls at the time. And it was just a brand new team that we created because there was no sevens teams then. And yeah, you, had a you lot me- of fun. Do you remember your best uh... – Remember your best play? My or, best moment? Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. There's one moment that always stuck out to me in time, and it was that that California tournament I just referenced that we went uh, – f- I think we went 5-0 and in the tournament. We weren't even supposed to really be there. Like, we were supposed to just socially be, like, hanging out, but we had an in. Um, one of the guys on our team's dad is, like, a past president for USA Rugby, so he knows all the right people, and he signed us up for the tournament, and we got in, and then somebody dropped out, so we moved up to the competitive side and ended up winning every game. And so they asked us if we wanted to play one final game against the third place team of the pro teams, like the actual Mm -hmm. good teams. And the team was Bay Fiji. And we played them uh, to a 7-5 victory. And the last play of the game, me and this kid named Etika, uh, he was on our team in college and he'd come, he's from Bay Area. And so him and his brother were both playing with us in that game. And we corner flagged a guy, which the guy was sprinting down the sideline and both of us had the angle and the the corner flag, like in soccer, is the end line. Well, in rugby, the corner flag is like right where the where you score. And to score, you actually got to put the ball down. So he was diving for that corner flag to try to put the ball down on the ground to get the points yeah. to win the game because it was a you know seven to five. And both me and Etika just blasted him right out of bounds, and that was the final play of the game. And oh, wow. So in front of like all these people, all these Islanders, and did dude, it was feel, oh man, it was great. It was one of like the Earl best. Thomas and Cam dude, Chancellor just dude. Blasted. It was one of the best <laughs> feelings I've ever had, and it was just for the win and how big the moment was. Like for us to like be this no name kids from Ellensburg, Washington, down in San Francisco, playing in this giant tournament that's got like Olympic qualifying, you know, credentials. Like right. the winner of that goes to Vegas and. And we we're playing the third place team. Wow. Like it was a big deal to us. And then to beat them was, you know, we beat the Cal alumni team. Like we did a lot of good that weekend. They should make a movie about you guys. Probably. I mean, I'll star in it. That's fine. <laughs> um, You'll play the coach or yeah. somebody because it's obviously you can't do it now. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, um, it was a lot of fun though. We. I mean, it was worst play. Worst play you've ever. You, you can remember that you just that <sighs> was a, like embarrassing, and you just or maybe something that you had. Like it was on um, you and you got juked or something. Oh, oh, geez. Well, there's one specific play I remember during a practice that was the most embarrassing play of my time as a rugby player that I can remember specifically where um, an older player who was a little bit bigger than me and I had just started playing. I was still kind of figuring it all out. Um, but I had an angle on him and I was going to light him up, big tackle, and he. I put my head down. Bad technique, right? Got to right. see through the body. Right. And I put my head down and he – took that opportunity to put his hand on the top of my head and push my face push straight, straight into, into the, the ground <laughs> and then scored as he's like holding the ball out in front of me as I'm like picking grass and dirt out of my mouth. Like he said, you know, he's yelling over his shoulder. That's why we don't put our head down. And you're like, yep. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. I won't forget that again. And you know, he tend to never forget that again. Wow. But. <clears throat> Was there uh like, how many games in the season do you guys? It depended. We usually played about 10 to 12. Um, there's two halves to a season, and then the playoffs are usually right after spring break. So if we made playoffs, we're the only people on campus during spring break doing two days with the international students still there because they don't go anywhere usually, you know. So, so wait, wait. Is, so is it, does it, when does the season kick off? Like right after Christmas kind of thing? Uh, it starts in the fall, and you play usually your first oh, half wow. of the season. You play like five to six games, and then you maybe will play like a little tournament right before winter break, and then you come back. And play your last few games. So it's an the all half. year almost. Uh... Yeah, well, and after spring break, it's over, and then you start. You wait till the summer, and then you start playing sevens. Um, now, cool. back when I was there, there was no. You know, we made our own sevens team and pick and choose what tournaments we wanted to pay to go play in. You know, and, and now it's on TV. You said or D one yeah, is on yeah. TV. Um, it's crazy how much it's blown up now, but yeah, uh, and you'll see Central Washington's rugby team out there usually playing in these big tournaments now and stuff. Um, Sevens has gotten a lot more popular, so you'll see the Collegiate Sevens National Championships on, like, NBC or whatever. And, yeah, it's kind of interesting to see. And you see were the, one of the founding 
Well, no, 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 no. Starting team? I mean, like for for that for our college, yeah, there was no team before us, and we were the first sevens team there. And for then, the college, yeah. Was there and, an Ellensburg? And then eventually, team, that Ellensburg though? team, no, the Ellensburg team went away because we all moved out. Gotcha. And then those guys who started kind of playing with us were like, well, what the heck are we going to do? You know? Yeah. And they're still stuck in Ellensburg because they're going to college still. So they're not graduated and took our team with us. So they're kind of the founding people. So then they started but a, they got, a college team. They yeah. got it started through you guys. Yeah, we sparked the interest of a sevens team in Ellensburg. There gotcha. was no sevens teams in Ellensburg until gotcha. us. Is and it then, a lot of nowadays? I mean, I don't know if you follow it still. Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. Did Ellen, huge, did, huge into rugby still. Do Ellensburg people come out for that now? Has it kind of grown? To well, Ellensburg like, rugby's always been, like, or Central Washington rugby's always been a big, not huge, but a big deal out yeah. there because they've been pretty successful, you know? They were the only Division One sport, you know? Mm-hmm. Um and then now that it's like a scholarship sport, now it's even bigger. Now it's like the sport out there. I mean, the football team's gotten better, but it's still just D2. And there's something about playing, you know, University of Washington and Washington State and right. Oregon, Oregon State and Cal and, you know, these teams that, you know, Pac-12 teams that make it kind of interesting. You know, you it's weird to see, you know, the Oregon State team van roll up or your team bus roll up into your <laughs> campus. You know, you don't see that every day at Central right. Washington and Ellensburg, you right. know. So it was kind of we, – we always kind of had that ability to draw fans from that and then – you know, we were always the best partiers too. Were you? Oh man, yeah, yeah. We always had the best houses, and I, think, I hope it's still that way. I don't know. Now, did you? Ever... I think they're a little more serious now than we were, though. We partied a lot and played rugby second, kind of. You know, <laughs> which is probably why we went zero and ten that first year, because <laughs> we saw the fun that they were having, and we did really good at that. But the stuff on field, maybe not so much. Did you get? Do you remember an injury? Like, did you ever break anything? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got plenty of injuries. We could spend a whole podcast talking about injuries. But um, what was your worst one? Worst one, most painful. We should say, um, not longest recovery, most painful. Probably my rib. I got pile drived once by a guy. No, my knee. My knee was most painful for sure. Yeah, no, the knee. Um, I was playing, kind of got caught flat footed, and I was playing like the quarterback position, kind of for rugby. It's the number ten, the fly half, and I was like called play or whatever, and I was you know received the ball. And the play was like a dummy inside to pass outside. And I went to do the dummy and there was like nobody there. So nobody fell for it. Like the guy was out of position for my team. So it was just me like standing there. With oh the ball, no. Like, oh, and the guy just dove right at my left oh, knee sheesh. and like and hyperextended it pretty bad. And I tore the, what's the tendon underneath your kneecap, the patella. The, yeah. The tibula or whatever. P- or uh, patella. patella? I okay. But I didn't do anything about it. I just kind of. Do you keep playing? Well, not that game, but that was a, a weekend tournament where we were down there playing like three or four up? teams. Oh, it, dude, it was so painful. It was hurt so bad. And like that game, I w- came out of that game and we had another game the next day. And the coach just basically said like, hey, if you can get through tonight, we'll stem your knee, you know, that stem therapy. I had a final I had to do that night too. Oh, yeah, gosh. that was the best, best part about being a student athlete. So <laughs> I'm getting stem therapy, ice. And I'm doing my final, like practicing for my final exam that, you know, one of my coaches is going to proctor right at the, you know, at like nine o'clock tonight <laughs> as I'm in the hotel lobby, you know? And so going through all that, that's the same night of the malice in the palace. Remember that? The, uh, Pacers, I got done with my therapy and sat down on the bed with my Tongan no roommate. Way. And he's like, I was like, why are we watching this stupid game? This is over. This game's done. And he's like. There's nothing else on, bro. And I was like, all right, whatever. And then all of a sudden, just chaos. And we're like screaming in our room, and the coaches come yelling at us. What are you our, doing making all this? Run our, our tests test, in the yeah. stands, punching people. Yeah, it was Dude, a crazy so night. Funny. Yeah, what a weird night to like have that happen. Okay, but. let's pause that for a okay. second because I remember that night too. Yeah. I never – I wasn't really watching basketball. I was working at, at the at, – I was living in Kent, working okay. at the church. Yep. And my friend showed up uh, that – who's like, hey, like, let's go do something. I'm like, all right. So we went to this bar down the street. And we just got some beers and 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 some food, and we're and we're watching, just just chilling. Like I don't like I'm not usually watching this, yeah. right? And so all of a sudden it's just chaos. Chaos. I think there was a race that day too. I think I may have went there to catch the end of a race, like there, a Saturday night race, probably. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Anyway, that would so, line up. Yeah. yeah. So so anyway, that's crazy. So you know how people are like oh. I look at the moon. I wonder if this person's looking at the moon at the same time. We were looking at the mouse. You and, and I were watching the mouse yeah. the palace at the same Going, time. We don't normally watch this, but I'm going to because well, I can't really get up right now. My knee hurts too right. bad. And my Tongan roommate's got the remote and he's five times and my then size. It went, so. Then it went ham. And then it went ape. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, I remember all the coaches came filing into our room and finding out why we're yelling and watch. Just watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. That was, a, that was a crazy week. But I ended up playing that next game that next day. And I don't know if you ever watch rugby, it's, it's very like, the pace is dictated by how you want to, 
how you want the pace to go. Like you can do a frantic quick pace where you're always sprinting and, or you can kind of slow it down a little bit. And that's what my coach told me. He's like, just slow it down. And I just want you to basically walk today. Uh, can you do that for me? And I was like, hundred percent. He goes, just call a really good game and just, you know, be in position all the time and just make sure your guys are where they need to be and you'll be fine. And played the whole game, and we ended up winning, and it was a freaking one of my more proudest moments. The only time that coach ever fist bumped me, he was that guy that like never talked, did anything. He was really? kind of the psychopath, you know. Um, and yeah, it was the one time he walked by me afterwards. I was you know exhausted, my knees on fire. I'm just like, yeah. what am I doing with my life? And yeah. Sitting on the bench after the game, and he walked by and he put his fist out, you know, and did the fist bump, and it was, oh my god, coach. Coach J Ray just gave me a fist bump. Did anybody else see that? Oh my God, this is the greatest day of my life. I've made it. I can quit now. I don't have to play anymore. But so so you could call a good game and just basically walk the whole game, yeah. I just relied on my forward pack and let my big guys do all the heavy lifting for me and then spun it out wide every once in a while, but didn't do any running myself. Basically took myself out of the game and just Yeah. It was fun. So they gave you the ball? Yeah. It's like being the quarterback. And, and instead of instead of like running an option offense, I, or if, cause rugby is a lot like, you know, running the option every play, right? right? Cause you can't throw the ball forward. You can only run it forward or kick it forward. Okay. And so I was, you know, I didn't do much kicking forward cause my knee hurt so bad. Right. I just basically was passing to my forwards, letting them grind away, grind away. And then when I'd notice the defense suck in, I'd toss it wide. And so I would just keep, you was know, it frustrating the defense? Um, were they getting tired of just seeing the same, like this kid who's obviously, no, because injured. it's a strategy. I mean, it is what it is. And right. they were a good team. It was a neck and neck game, and they yeah. kind of played the same way. They're a real grinded out, like Navy SEAL type team. It was St. Mar- uh, St. Mary's College. Huh. And they're very, like, disciplined and kind of like we were. And so, yeah, I mean, I have a reputation there as the stiff arm guy already. So I was good with that. <laughs> I didn't need to show off that day because they're like one of our sister colleges. We played them every year, like twice a year. They'd come stay with us. We'd billet them. You know, we'd have like three or four of them stay in our house. Dude, and... I didn't know it was that big of a deal. Yeah, man. I wish I would have came and watched you play like once or twice. There's a video out there somewhere of me lighting up the uh, Cougar captain in my first start. That was one of my more prouder moments. Like five minutes into the first ever start of my career on like the first side. Yeah. Uh, their big superstar guy who everybody talked about was this pretty stocky from dude from wazoo yeah and he was like player coach kind of kid you know what like, year was this uh 2006 ish oh okay five ish 2005 okay yeah um i lit him up my parents have it on tape but then the video quarter like died but I, I got a concussion like so hard that game i don't remember finishing the game like i thought we did really well we lost like 49 <laughs> to 9 or something like that and i remember coming off being like good game guys and i was all mad and what's wrong with you but that happened a lot i i probably had like seven concussions i broke my ankle you got some cte you think probably have you noticed that at yeah all? like i noticed that i um will lose my train of thought sometimes like when i sh- when i shouldn't like different than ADHD? Yeah. Like where you're just like kind of like talking, Where I'm talking, talking and talking. all of a sudden I'm like, what am I talking about? Gotcha. Yeah. That's the scariest part is like when it's just like I just blank. Is there any driving? Why. Like I drove, drove, and all of a sudden like you don't know where you are or you – No, more like uh, – <laughs> I don't remember the past 20 miles. Yeah. Like I don't remember listening to the podcast that I was just <laughs> listening to. Like, wait, what were they talking about? <laughs> Like, am I off of my own thoughts? I don't know what's going on. Uh, but the anger thing is the one thing that I've noticed the most is that it's it's I I have a harder time controlling my temper sometimes. With kids, with wife, with just stuff? Just in general. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I tend to fly off the handle more than I probably should. All the time? Like, more often? More often than I should, yeah. Like, once a week are we talking? Like, what? Oh, no. Uh, well. <laughs> now, are you like... Are you like... Uh, 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 maybe... Uh, now, uh, with, he seems like a nice guy. With uh, with Gordon Ramsay, like, are you talking about like, at work? Are you just no, like, no, no? I'm pretty cool at work. Oh, let's edit that. I don't know about cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm you pretty cool. Yeah, I keep my cool at work pretty well. Um, I've snapped a couple times, but not like fake TV chefs like to. Like Gordon's not like that in real life. You don't think so? No, I know so. Have he's you, not. He's putting on a show. He's pretending to be his old have boss. You, have you met him? I've never met him, but I've worked with people who have definitely worked with him. Oh. And will tell you otherwise. He's just faking it up. For, he does it for TV. Yeah, yeah. It's his TV personality. You'll see like his new show right now. It's more him. Like that one where he's going around the world eating stuff. Like yeah. he's, he's an off the cuff, you know, kind of ornery cuss, but he's not a psychopath kicking garbage cans, calling people donkeys in the kitchen. That's all for show. That's have all for TV. You, have you had anybody try to try to emulate him that you've seen, like thinking that that's the way to go? Yeah, am I allowed to throw people under the bus here? Go. F- I mean, like, 
I, my, one of my worst it's experiences. Your career. Let me just let me just remind you. What you're saying <laughs> is could affect your career. It's not going to affect me at, at all. all. <laughs> this is going to affect you. One so. of my worst experiences was with a celebrity chef, and anyone who knows me in my professional career has heard this story a million times. Okay, and anyone who was there that day knows that I was on the verge of snapping. Yeah that day because I was so frustrated. And some of his things that he said were legitimate. Um, I, they were out of my control. It was my first year running that event that I was saying, yeah. you know, the big, big five course meal that I do every year with a celebrity chef. Um, this celebrity chef was not very kind, um, kind of inappropriate to be honest on something on some level. And I guess I won't say his name so we can okay, avoid that. So we know it's a guy. Okay. Yeah, it's a guy. Um, but like this year, um, big shout out to Carla Hall. She was amazing. She's great. She was amazing. She was one of the funnest people I've worked with in a long time. She was super appreciative of all the hard work that we'd done through that whole week, prepping out her food, you know, yeah. making her look good. Cause essentially that's what we're doing. You right. know, we're showcasing her food, but we're the ones making it. Um, and she just goes up on stage and does her thing. And you know, as everyone's eating the food that I've made, so we got to make sure it's up to her standards. Right. And, and she was awesome, man. She tried all of our food and she loved it. Said we did a great job. She kept telling all the board, the board members how awesome we were doing. And yeah, she was great. It did was fun. She, did, did they say don't meet your heroes? Because if you meet your heroes, um, <laughs> you'll be th- disappointed. You'll be disappointed. Yeah. I've never really had heroes in the culinary world because I just kind of grinded my way up. You know, I didn't realize this is what I was going to do. But you said that you watch YouTube videos and this and that. Were you ever watching it? Did you ever like cook or be around somebody that you watched them on YouTube? Yeah. Down the road? Like, like oh yeah. man, I'm, and was it a celebrity chef? Yeah. Ming Tsai. And what, cool, cool or bad? Uh, Not the one we're talking about. But, uh, okay. <laughs> I had a very poor experience with him. He okay. was not fun to be around. He, you know, like I said, he was legitimately right on a couple of his his gripes with us. Yeah. But his the way he treated us and the way it all went down was not professional, and I was not a fan. Not a fan. Want me to cut this at all? I don't really know. I don't think so. I think it's fine. So if you were to walk up, did you walk up to him like, "Hey, dude, I like checked your YouTube videos out," and he's like, "No, it was more like, like he off. showed up." Yeah, he showed up that first day. I'm gonna guess go into it. He showed up that first day and and uh, basically just had no regard for anybody didn't care you know just, i'm just um, here yeah and like we have a stage chef who is kind of their runner on stage and they're like go between between me and them and he was getting along with him pretty good and so he brought me up to meet him because i hadn't even met him yet mm-hmm. he just kind of got there and was just kind of going over stuff with his people and our people and like i said i wasn't fully immersed into the, i wasn't running the event like i do now with my boss you know right. me and him basically co-run this event the last two years but this was my first year just kind of trying to run a kitchen. My old boss had co-run the event and basically was like, Hey, you're coming to help. (laughs) Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Whatever you want, you know? Um, and he introduced me to him and he immediately didn't even say hi. Like he's like, Hey, this is, uh, you know, chef Aaron, he's been here all week prepping your food and making things, you know, as good as they can be for you this week. Um, and instead of like saying hi, thank you, anything, I don't even need a thank you. Just say hi to me. Right. Right. Be polite. Right. He's like, uh, we serving the tart warm or cold. Or you said the quiche, warm or cold, and we weren't serving a quiche, so I was really confused. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I don't want it served cold. I just want to make that apparent right now. And it's like, just off the cuff, really rude, and was like, oh, you mean the tart? No, the crab tart? No, it's going to be served ambient, you know, room temp. And he's like, okay, good. I don't want to serve a cold quiche to somebody. And he keeps calling it a quiche, which to me just was like, okay, these are your recipes that I'm doing. (laughs) And then he comes through to taste the food, and he's just a total jerk the whole time. Just basically ripping our food apart. Um, And like I said, one of the things was very legitimate. We had gotten a really poor crab product um, that we should never have even used. We should have called our vendor right away and said, get this shit out of here. Get some new stuff in. This is Pacific Northwest. We're not using this garbage. Like, I'm going to get some fresh crab from down the street if that's what I need, which is what we did. I raced down to Olympia Seafood and bought, like, as many – I bought their entire tank of fresh crab, got, like, six tables lined up. And this is, like, on the fly, like, a couple hours before the event and had, like, 25 different cooks lined up on either side of this table just cleaning crab had big pots of water boiling steaming them you know throwing them in the water boiling right. them, pulling them out cleaning them and getting it in getting it done was there a good difference did- oh 100 and that was like the one thing that's like i couldn't argue with him for but his the way he did it was so rude and so like just such a jerk and it gets to the point where he's tasting like our salad dressings for the event and i made all the dressings for this for this event it was like the first thing i did like one of the first days i was there and I was not a fan of the dressings. I thought they taste like crap. <laughs> so, you, so you agreed with him? No. He gets there and he tastes my first one and he's like, it was like peanut butter dressing. Yeah. And he goes, 
Jiffy, delicious, and throws a spoon on the ground. Which, again, another thing. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you being just disrespectful for no reason? Yeah. But, yeah, Jiffy, delicious. And where's the other one? It was like this sesame ginger vinaigrette or something tasted. He's like, perfect, great. But I guess the whole time I was standing behind him because he had his back to me, and I guess my arms are crossed, and I had that look like I'm about to tackle you. Yeah. Like I'm about to go old school rugby style and yeah. just blast you from behind, dude. This is about to go down. <laughs> and one of the chefs who kind of mentored me along is standing next to me, and he elbows me, and he's like, arms down and it, like under his breath yeah. and i was like oh shit. you know i had like so locked into what i was like my anger and my emotions i was ready to light the guy up focused but, yeah but last year was cool we had roy yamaguchi last year he was awesome he was fun he brought two of his executive chefs down from hawaii and they were incredible got along with them really well we collaborated on some changes and you know it was just a really the event went super smooth and now do you glean from them like because they yeah, come through or absolutely. you're like oh man that's kind of oh, okay i didn't mm-hmm. know that yeah nice. yeah it was funny because the i was so worried about impressing roy yamaguchi and his staff because i knew they were coming down to help us right. that like we did everything from scratch like everything from scratch like we pickled mandarin segments so i like segmented mandarin oranges yeah you know, a little golf ball size mandarin yeah. oranges, probably like a thousand of them to get all the segments I needed for that event. And I have like three or four people helping me, but we spent like a whole night doing that. And then they got there and they're like, oh, those are really good, man. Did you make those from scratch? We're like, yeah. He goes, oh man, we put that on the menu just because we use those canned ones that everybody gets. <laughs> and I was like, you mother. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe you guys did that. And then we like Julianne and pickled all our own gobo and stuff. And he's like, oh, man, why'd you waste all your time? robo that. Like, just throw it in the blender. Burr, burn that up. Like, wow. And I'm like doing it all by hand, like yeah. slicing it. But the picture you sent me, it was sliced really thin on like a mandolin. He's like, oh, man, that's just for show. We don't ever do that in the kitchen. Man, I'm doing this for the 600 people. You could have told me that when you sent the recipe. Like, ignore the picture. But, yeah, it was really cool. We, that, I think, honestly, Joey is going to have a fun time talking with you about this because he's all into this stuff. I'm, cool. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, that, I love talking food to people who actually care. Yeah, he cares. Um, it's hard to the people that, like, eat out of their freezer all the time with the freezer meals and stuff. Yeah, and then no. they want to talk to you about food. And it's like, you yeah, not yeah. get in it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't deal with that. <laughs> um, well, we're, we're, uh, we're flying through. We are. We, we've covered rugby. We've covered cooking. We've covered it's rugby. It's time to talk Christmas. Cooking. Let's talk Christmas. Yeah. Okay. So typically it would be ham on Christmas. Uh-huh. Are you making something different? Are you making turkey on Christmas? Are you making ham? Are you doing something different? Uh, you know, I haven't given it a ton of thought. Um, a lot of times I'll do steak on Christmas, like a nice rib roast, just because I like being fancy. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I'm going to cook, I'm going to usually go all out. That's kind of, we kind of talked about how much I cook at home and when right. I choose and when I choose not to, it's usually when I either want to spoil Ashley cause yeah. you know, she's loves when I cook Yeah, and I know what she likes and I know how she likes it. So, you yeah. know, like last night we didn't know what to have and the kids just wanted like chicken nuggets and fries and I didn't really feel like doing that, but I was like, all right, let's go to Safeway. So I took the oldest to Safeway we went and got chicken nuggets and fries for them. Like frozen. Yeah. Yeah, like the, yeah. Now you're like, okay. For them, that's fine. And then I went and I got like, I just was like, what? Because Ashley was like, I'm not really even that hungry. I was like, well, what will she eat? And I just thought, oh, Waveless Ranchero, she loves that. Like, I if I put that in front of her, she will eat it. And so yeah. I went and I found some good salsa and, you know, a can of refried beans and got some, you know, some tortillas and made her some Waveless Rancheros and she grubbed out. Nice. Know? So, yeah, I like to like, do things either that I know will be appreciated, that I know will get eaten. Right. Or I go all out. And so for Christmas, it'll probably be... Either something themed, yeah. like I'll get inspiration on something I just did, or I'll see a cookbook that I haven't looked at in years, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm doing something out of here, and I'll just start going through it, and I'll pick, all right, this is what we're doing for our entree, this will be a side, and then we'll do this, this, and this. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so then, I know for Thanksgiving, we did the top five to make, top mm-hmm. five to eat. Mm-hmm. Oh, should we do that again? I think it's kind of similar for it's Christmas. Kind of similar, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just your protein changes. Everything else stays about the same. So then we'll just talk about – let's talk about Christmas memories. Then. Yeah. Okay. So Christmas memories. One year. Now, for me, Christmas memories, it would either be at Grand, uh, Grandpa Jean's yep. or it would be at your parents. Mm-hmm. I don't know – rarely if it was ever hosted at our house again i don't think so but do you ever do the fishing thing with your family or was that my dad's side of the family well we we'd what, like on christmas yeah we put the presents somebody would be over the edge of like the railing you know the banister there. yeah, yeah. 
and we'd put the poles over there and be like, oh, who's a, I think Adam's we, going fishing for his gift. Let's see what he gets. I, and then like the dad down there would pull the thing a couple times and clip it on with like a clothespin and I hey, think look, a ninja turtle. I think we did that one time. Yeah, yeah. One that was always kind of fun. Familiar. Um, but but again, we'd wait forever. Christmas, mm-hmm. you know, get there. They'd, there'd be some bowl game, some college football bowl yep. game. Yep. Um, as we got older, we would pretty much just go hang up upstairs at the Port Orchard place. Yeah. And watch uh, Saturday Night Live. Yes. Like they'd, they'd have that on Comedy Central, yes. like on repeat. Both loved, of our families are big Saturday Night Live people. Loved yeah. Saturday Night yep. Live. Still do. Big time. Oh yeah. yeah still do. Um. And uh, it's so funny how people... Undefeated Trivia Pursuit Saturday Night Live right here. <laughs> how people... <laughs> never lost. I haven't played in like 10 years, but I've still never lost. How people will uh, say, oh, I remember that was funny back. And like they've like as the years go yeah. on... Every generation it's says, it's every, not as good as the last it's, generation. It's, yeah, yeah, it's like, okay. Okay, it's yeah. funny. It's Just, always, it's, it is always funny. Yes. You may disagree with it yes. politically, or you may disagree with yes. with uh, this and that, but it's, al- it's, it's always funny. Always been yeah. funny. Yep. Um, I think the women on there now are hilarious. Like I love some of those girls coming to Saturday Night Live. Like the, the Ghostbusters thing. Yeah. Like that movie was hilarious. I don't care. I know I'm probably gonna take some shit for this, but I love the new Ghostbusters. I thought it was hilarious. I those girls were it. funny. I haven't seen it. Maybe because I got girls now, and I'm Could be. kind of more inspired Enjoy by girls it. doing yeah. things. You know, kind of more pay attention to that at least. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Um, all I know is that Saturday Night Live was like always on. But if there was a holiday. We were upstairs, yep. or well, we were upstairs, and it was it was on, yep, on repeat, and uh, and so I'm, one of the best gifts I've ever received. I've received some great gifts, but one of the best ones, David and Chelsea went all out for me. Got me this Casey Kane like, oh nice, like uh, I pro- I hope I still have it. I hope I still have it. It was like a a work. Or a pit crew. It's like a pit oh. crew shirt. Like oh, nice. A button up pit, pit crew shirt. Yeah. yeah, it was so sweet. Had all the stitching on it. Had all the like, cool. different. Yeah, that was. Dave and Chelsea are good gift dude, givers. They went all out. I felt so guilty because I'm like, I think we got them like a DVD or no something. No pressure, Dave and Chelsea. But yeah. you guys are good gift they givers. They always, yeah. <laughs> I was surprised. I'm like, dude, these guys like legit were, were it. Um, but, but growing up, growing up, it would be go over there, mm-hmm. bowl game on mm-hmm. as a kid, go outside, outside, play football yep. outside. Well, this one year, we somehow were able to like okay, you guys are gonna spend the night. Yeah, it's Christmas. We we thought it was our idea, but probably was never our probably idea. Wasn't our idea. No. Well, a huge. I don't. It's like I don't know if they even knew. That's like, what I don't understand. Like that's the part I don't get. Did they know? I mean, how could it have been? It's like it hit. Was this the movies where it's like, oh hey, it's cr- wake it's, up cr- cr- next morning and all of a sudden there's three feet of snow and everything's frozen. And, and then like and like uh, yeah, the, what's the other thing? Uh, freezing rain. They had freezing yeah. rain. Yeah. Like it took down like power lines. Oh man, it was. I remember going outside and walking and everything having like a thick sheet of yeah. ice on it. We were stuck. Yep. Like we were like legitimately and, stuck. And again, they lived on a little bit of a sloped driveway. Yep. yep. So it ain't. We ain't getting out. No. And by the way, we did talk. We didn't talk about this on the Thanksgiving one. The big sledding one was on a Thanksgiving. Was it? Yeah. Okay. I, remember, I remember it snowed on that Thanksgiving, yeah. and it just happened to snow that day. Yep. But uh, but the thing is, you ain't getting up that driveway. Mm-mm. And so there was, and I remember Uncle Wayne, firefighter at the time, yep. uh, fire chief at the time, fire marshal, fire probably. marshal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was kind of stuck at home mm-hmm. and I'm sure there's all this stuff going on yeah. where he's probably needing to be a part of it. Yeah. But he was kind of stuck at yeah. home. Yeah. We were all stuck there. And there's power lines down. They couldn't get out of the, like couldn't go up the hill because there's like a power line down over the middle of the road. Oh and, man. And so I do remember like, and so it turned into like a four to five day. Yeah. Way like, longer than we were ever anticipating. And it probably drove, like we try to keep to ourselves Downstairs. Downstairs. Yep. But it I'm probably... I'm sure my parents hated us all at the end yeah. of that weekend. <laughs> yeah. They, it was turning into The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yep. There you go. There it is. <laughs> they were great. At no point did they ever blow up at us. Nope. There, I remember one point where... Because Uncle Wayne would kind of keep to himself upstairs. He'd be in this garage or he'd be doing something else upstairs. Running the generator. Because I know he always was really proud of making sure that generator was running the going. refrigerator and all that stuff. Yeah. Having well, a TV going and... At one point, he came downstairs to hang out with all of us, and he never did that. No, yeah, like that's he rare. never would cross that yeah. thre- that threshold. Yeah. And I remember him just laying on the couch, 
just chilling, hanging out with us. And, you know, I don't know if we were watching movies or video games. I think he had a ping pong table. I mean, yeah. he had a lot of stuff going on down Uncle there. Uncle Pete got that ping pong table for us. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Are you still good at ping pong? No. No, no I don't think so. Although I said I was terrible at pool, and the last weekend I guess I sank like three shots in a row. You don't remember it, though? Kind of. I kind of remember was it. Was it CTE or was it uh, no, it was a little, alcohol little drinky E? Yeah, a little drinky E. <laughs> um, I but was yeah. celebrating the event and, you know, got a little carried away. Christmas is such a great time. Now, yep. did you guys have traditions like uh, one Christmas? Because we had the tradition of Christmas Eve. You could eat, you could open one gift. No, we never did that. We had So my dad's mom would buy us uh, what we call like a Santa bag. And it was just like, honestly, a lot of QVC stuff. Yeah. Um, and random things. Yeah. And she would give every family one of those, and we would open that on Christmas Eve. Oh, okay. But it was never like it toys was, or stuff like that. It was like mailed socks. To no, she would drop it off usually because Christmas oh, okay. Eve is usually um, my dad's side of the family would come over Christmas Eve. I like that tradition. So she, it would be a it would be a Santa bag. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. My mom doesn't know. Well, I don't know if she's done it last year, but she did it a couple years in a row. Tried to keep it going. So she so she'll drive and drop it off. Well, like usually we'll meet up for Christmas Eve or whatever or Christmas gotcha. Day, and then she'll just give it to the family. Then and we go home and we'll open it. But it's like I remember my grandma's has always had like a few things that was always in there, like socks, <laughs> kitchen towels, uh, calendar, like the yeah. Cancer Care Alliance calendar, you know, <laughs> that you get for donating, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And then there'd be like some random QVC stuff in there, you know, like hand warmers and, and just random stuff. Dude, I like that. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was fun. I might... A lot of gifts to open up, but, you know, at the end you're looking at the stuff like, did I really even get anything? <laughs> what is all this? <laughs> what is this for? I see mom got some new spatulas. <laughs> what, what's, uh, one of the things that Jamie and I are doing is because we go to the Muckleshoot Casino and every month they have, each week they have a different thing that they give away for the patrons. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's... Uh, so we, we we're now just it's pots and pans yeah. and like <laughs> this utensil, this little electronic, or this dust buster. Like it's nothing like super crazy cool, but all at the same time, like we're putting them away as a, in a hope chest. Yeah. So when the kids get older, you're just gonna give it to them. Here, hey, you're moving out. Here's your pots <laughs> and pans. Here's nice. your spatula. Here's your nice. waffle iron. Here's your and then as you get older. These will probably need to get replaced because this probably has a shelf life of like only so long. Yeah, a year. Yeah, yeah. But at least you gotta get get you going. So yeah. was that kind of the same type of things that, that you would be receiving? Uh that, in those bags for sure. Yeah. 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 It's that kind of stuff where it's just like I never needed this, but all right. Thanks for another one. <laughs> um Oh, I remember one year she gave us those, you know, like saran wrap holders and like foil holders so you like take it out of the box and you put it in this like hard plastic thing that shuts yeah 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 i still have them still use them but kind of one of those things like what's the point what's the point did i really need this what was the grandma's name again edith edith that's right that's right Uh, yeah i remember always being like it was like foreign it was like a foreign land maybe kind of the same time when you guys maybe the times where we'd have a barn party and you guys would come yeah, and yeah. it would be the Kenny family there yeah, too. Yeah, very much so. And so your uncles were so different than like what I was used to. You know, yeah. my dad doesn't hang out with us, and your uncles are like, "Let's play basketball." Yeah. And there's like five of them standing over there, like picking teams with us. Yeah. Like this is so cool. The adults are playing with us. Yeah. That was mind blowing to me because that never <laughs> happened on my side of the family. I mean, Uncle Pete didn't really play with us ever. Every once in a while, the Kenny here and there uncles would get him to, you know, hey, come on in. But yeah, he his, had his, his knees, knees, man. Yeah, yeah. his, his yeah. knees. He didn't. You know, he 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 wouldn't be able to. Um, one of the things, here's my greatest, one of my greatest regrets is we talk about uncle Pete. So my first marriage, uh, Sadie had like 14 people that she wanted to add to, she's like, I got 14, uh, bridesmaids. And I'm like, Oh, I remember that. And I'm like, I was a groomsman. Yeah. You're a groomsman. I'm yeah. like, I got to fill this roster now. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, well, let's see. I'm going to have to get this person. I'm going to get the cousins. I throw some uncles in. And, uh, the one uncle that I didn't have on. And I wish I did. I, I I realized it a little too late after mm-hmm. I had already did my invites to some I had a couple friends that came in there too. Mm-hmm. I should have replaced with Uncle Pete. I, I it was one of those things where I felt even like he's pro, he's like the only one sitting in the audience that's an uncle. Yeah. Not standing up there. Yeah. I felt like shit. Uh, I felt like shit. I felt like utter shit. Yeah. And he's not that. I love Uncle Pete. He's yeah. a great guy. 
he's done some pretty fun stuff for us, whether yeah. it's, I mean, he's golfing pretty generous. And stuff. Yeah, golfing, yeah. saying, hey, whoever wins this one. I remember when remember we, that? We, we played some tournament. Uh, it was like you, me, Adam. And maybe Craig. Adam and Craig. And yeah, then, and he was just giving away his old stuff every give, hole. Yeah, every, yeah. He's not even playing anymore. Yeah. He played like the first hole with us, yeah. and it was just like, all right, hey, here you guys go. Who wants a putter? Yeah. You win this hole, you get this putter. Whoever wins this gets this. <laughs> and I remember like I lost, but everyone else had just bought a brand new golf bag. And he's like, okay, so I was going to give this golf bag to the winner of the main thing. But you've all bought them except for Travis. So, Travis, here you go. Here's your <laughs> here's your consolation prize. Yeah. <laughs> I think he even gave me golf clubs, actually. I think it was – I think they were uh, – Yeah, I remember. I got ja- a putter the, out Nick, of them. Nicholas clubs, I want to yeah. say. Yeah. Nice clubs. Yeah, because he gave me his Cleveland set when he upgraded to his Nicholas set. Oh, really? And so, like, and he, God, shout out to Uncle Pete. You remember him telling me, you got to sleep with these for one night now. So I remember <laughs> sleeping with him in my, and I still have those clubs. Those are like the, actually, no, no, I did upgrade. I finally did upgrade when I was living in McCormick Woods. I had those clubs forever, though. Like, I used those for like 10 years. And yeah. then, like, right before I went to college, I got a new set, like a used tailor made set. And that's yeah. the set I still have. Yeah. Uh, but he, I still have the putter I won that day, the, the zebra putter. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you use it still? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I were to ever go putting. He, uh, <laughs> yeah. So he was, he was, aw- he, he's an awesome guy. He's still an awesome guy. Um, but yeah, so for Christmas and stuff, like we would, we were, I was a God son and he was, you were a God son mm-hmm. of his. And so you'd always get a little, little, little better, bonus, a little yep. better gift, a little better gift than yep. everyone else. I remember him got, I think got me, he got me RC Pro Am for a regular Nintendo. Nice. And I was like, yeah, I feel like he got me a video game sweet. one year too, like uh, Mario 3 or something like that, yeah. you know? It was so cool. Yeah. Yeah. He was awesome. Yeah. And he'd do that like, I remember one year he came to my ha- our house for Christmas and he had all the gifts in like little boxes. Like he had wrapped a box. Remember he had oh, like yeah. sunglasses he had a, and stuff and you yeah, had to like had punch through the hole. There, punch it in, grab yeah, it. Yeah, he was always out. clever like yeah. that. It was cool. He made it fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, Christmas is, a, you know, it's it's a fun time. We need to get the Carter Christmases going again. Do you remember walking to the movie? Back to that weekend. Oh, yeah, the, Do you the, remember the that? Snow. Yes. There was that one day where we were like finally had enough and we were like we're going to go rent a movie from the yeah. movie place and go buy like candy at the Yes. the, the little kids. convenience yes. store and we yeah. walked and wasn't it like me and It was all four of us. Uh, but we split up, remember? And we got we got like an argument about it. Some some petty stupid little kid stuff where we were like fighting about who we all didn't need to go or oh, something. Probably, probably, and probably. we're trying to like ditch Craig or something and no offense, Craig. Yeah, but I'm I don't trying to remember what... where do we walk though. Do we walk to uh, we walk to the, the conven- Chevron area? Mm-hmm. That one, I don't know what it is now. It's, that's kind of far. It is kind of far. We had to walk up to the church. Yeah, down the road that the church was on. Right, and then hang a left and go down that hill. Yeah, so, yeah. but remember we, I think me and Adam split off and we walked that route, and we thought you guys were just going to go back home, and you guys tricked us. And you walked back like you were going to go home. As soon as we couldn't see you, you guys walked down the trail. That was this little gated road that you could, you know, hop the gate. Yeah. But it was like, you know, owned by private property or whatever. Yeah. But that that dirt road went from my house, well, behind the house behind my house, all the way back up to that gas station. Really? Yeah. So we got there faster? So you guys beat us there. Me and Craig? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Sounds and so like- then me and Adam look like the donkeys and we're like, what the hell? <laughs> the hell's going on <laughs> thought we had him nope nope i remember walking back though and the bags ripped the like, bags ripped like home, like home alone. alone yep i remember that too and we were all like mad at each other <laughs> we'd been was, around each other we for like five so, days yeah, we were so yeah i could not wait to get home but at the time it was awesome at the time it was so sweet yeah. it was like this is no way but it, it made it sound like every, and i remember every night or every day morning it would be like Aunt Kim would say, okay, well, it looks like it's just going to be tonight, but you'll be going back yep. home tomorrow. All right, well, it okay. looks like it'll be And it was like turning like over and yeah, over. And at that point, day. you know, you're just sleeping on the floor. Yep. You're sleeping on couches. And you're just yep. like, I saw my own bed. Sick of I got all everybody. these Christmas presents that yep. I had that I, that I got that I can't enjoy right yep. now. Yep. CD Walkman. Yeah. I think we bought we got a CD Walkman at the same time. You got a CD Walkman? I think so. Sounds about right. Mega based. Just boost that mega that based up. Or turn that that knob. <laughs> Disc or a shock uh, a shock absorber. Shock Three absorber. second <laughs> anti skip. <laughs> that was a thing, man. That mattered. That was a big uh, deal. That was a big deal. I remember. I think that. I think I had gotten Donkey Kong Country, uh, Super Nintendo, Donkey Kong Country, uh, NBA Jam, uh, that big bulky like CD mm-hmm. tape radio player yeah. that you could. Unmount the, the <laughs> speakers, the speakers too. Yeah. from, 
And then, yeah, I just, I just like, we had a great Christmas that Christmas. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember, uh, summers when we would spend like a week at your house and then you'd spend a week yeah. at our house and the itineraries with me and you would drop and for it would everybody not be do. fun and it would not be yeah. fun we were jerks yeah because we was like okay from 10 a.m to 11 30 we're gonna do this and, and then, then we're, we're gonna, 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 gonna watch this cartoon we're gonna do this we're gonna do that yeah. then we're gonna play this and, and then, then we're, we're gonna, gonna dig that. a pool and they're gonna play yeah oh dig in the pool that was good i stuff. can't believe your parents let us dig a hole in your property i know they that it, big yeah that was that's definitely an it was issue. a big hole. And then we put a tarp in it, and tried to fill it up with water, and just turned yeah. brown. Yeah, we watched Encino Man, and we we're like, "Hey, we're, <laughs> we're, 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 we're we're gonna dig our own pool." We got we did we some, dug a big yeah. hole. <laughs> yeah, we did great. We, big tarp. Oh man! All right, let's talk about that around summer. That's good. Yeah. Everyone, Merry Christmas! Thanks for listening. Have a great uh, New Year if you don't hear from us. Um, but uh, appreciate everyone listening again. Send send questions about Aaron. Send questions about, uh, or even stories, or even anything that, that we can talk about. And uh, one of these days, we need to talk about Danny and the time he broke my brother's Ninja the Turtle. Infamous Ninja Turtle. Yeah. That was like the first thing I said to you when I was like, You're like, you should come on. And I was like, We can talk about Danny and the Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Such an infamous day. Bust it in half. Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care.